Hey guys and welcome back, Joe here from borntoproduce.com. So in this lesson we're going to have a mess around with the fantastic Groove Agent, which is the inbuilt Cubase drum machine and sampler. And so we're going to get some kind of a beat down before we record our guitar. So the first thing we need to do is just remove this track here because it was just for demonstration purposes in the last lesson. So I'm going to right click and remove this track. And it will say, do you want to delete the audio as well? So yes. So Groove Agent, we need to get an instrument track. And there's two ways of doing this. You can come to plus up here and choose instrument and then just choose Groove Agent, which will be under drum. And click add track. Or we can right click here and add instrument track. Groove Agent, add track. Now Groove Agent is a huge beast and is super, super powerful, and I couldn't possibly go through all its features in this very, very short and basic lesson. But I'll definitely give you an introduction to it. So as you can see, you've got 16 pads, and you can put your own samples on these pads, or you can use the ones that come, you know, built-in libraries, built-in banks, and you can play these pads from your keyboard or your drum machine or drum pad or your mouse. You know, it's just brilliant. So let's load up a kit. So let's just click in here where it says Kit 1. And we can go to style, you know, you choose your genre, or whatever, and you can go through the filters. But I'm just going to choose this one here, move it because it's sort of pop and rock, and that's kind of what this track's going to be. Double click it, and it will load it in. So now all our pads have got samples, whereas before they were all empty. And I can trigger these with my mouse. Or my keyboard. Now you can see that I'm actually pressing C2. So I need to press C1. That's what these little numbers are here. So on and so on. So the first thing you can do, obviously, is just record it in yourself. I've got a slight latency because we, I'm using that voice meter sound card, but you should be alright on yours. Each pad comes with volume control, pan control, pitch control, all sorts of filter envelopes. You know, you can add reverb to it and you can change the sample start time, you can fade it in. So if your sample is really long, you can, you know, shorten it off, that kind of thing. And I will be going through some of this stuff, but let's just get a drum beat going and get on with making a groove. So the first thing I'll show you is the really, really easy way, a really, really quick way to get a pattern in. Go to pattern mode as opposed to instrument. And we've got some pre-made patterns for us, so you haven't got to do your own. Verse, chorus, fills. I'm holding down my mouse click, by the way. And what you can do is just drag these in. So I'm going to drag in verse A. I'm going to use G to zoom out a bit. And I'm going to drag in verse B, which is slightly different. Let's put this on four. So if you've got it on like too fine, like 16th note, this quantize, you can sometimes drop it, you know, like there, slightly off the grid, or slightly off the beat, I should say. So if you've got it on quarters, it's a lot easier. So there we have two lots of four bars worth of drum loops, one slightly different from the other. And this is what it sounds like. So I'm just going to use that Alt P trick, highlight both Alt P or Option P. And you get the idea. And now if you double click it, it will automatically open up in the lower zone, which you can make bigger by using this handle here. And you can zoom up or down here, or scroll up and down, I should say. And you can zoom up and down here. And you can see the actual pattern we've dragged in. C1 being the kicks, D1 being the snares, and we've got some kind of a hi-hat ride and a crash. And obviously you're free to change any of these around. So now you might want to put it back on 16 and let's just say you wanted, oh, let's make sure that the snap is on. You've got a snap control within the editor window as well. So let's just say you wanted to move 
who's around slightly. And just give it a bit of swing or groove. Just undo those with Control Z and you can redo by doing Control Shift and Z. So feel free to add in different hits, program in, in yourself. All you've got to do is click on the draw tool and draw in. You know, do your own thing. So just quickly undo all those. You can also right click to get that menu, a quick menu up, so you can choose between the normal tool, which is object selection, or pen tool, or eraser tool, or cut tool, you know, whatever. You can also make this window bigger by clicking this button here, and therefore you get the whole lot on one screen. But by default, it will open up in the lower zone. So that's patterns, and you can change the pattern to your heart's content. Now, let's just say you wanted to record in your own pattern. Let's show you how to do that. So I'm going to be coming back to this pattern uh, in a second. So I'm just going to mute that and create a new track, instrument track, groove agent, load up a kit, just use the same one. So this time I'm going to record it in. It's going to be tricky because of the latency. Latency is just the amount of time it takes for Cubase to register what's going on. It's because I'm using that voice meter audio setting. It just it just makes the latency a bit longer. But we can quantize. So you know this is going to be all out of time. But we can quantize it later, which puts everything back in time. So it'd be a good opportunity for me to show you that. So what we need to do is just get the cursor back to the start. I need to show you the metronome so we can play in time. So metronome on or off is here or the shortcut is C on your keyboard. Let's just go to the setup first of all. You can also activate it here. You can change the sounds, but you don't need to do that really. Just use the standard sounds. You want to click while recording. You can have that clicked here. Click while playing. Click during counting. And a two bar counting is standard. And I'm just going to leave everything as it is because it just works for me. So come up to your track. Make sure it's highlighted. We don't need Groove Agent open anymore. Make sure that record enable is pressed and just click record down here and play something in on your keyboard. Yeah, and as expected, that was really difficult due to the latency, but um, um, you shouldn't have this problem at all. So let's go into it. Let's make it bigger. Now what we can do is just highlight everything. Make sure we're on 16th quantize setting. And this is probably because it's so late. It's basically going to put these all these notes that are slightly before or slightly after the 16th grid lines, which are these individual ones. It's going to put them onto the grid. So it basically tidies up your timing. If you press Q on your keyboard or just Q up here. But my timing is so far out due to the latency, it's probably put them in the wrong places. But let's just have a look. Let's just turn off the metronome a second. Go back to the start. We can always come in here and move these notes as well. So you get the idea. Okay, so I've just tidied up that timing a little bit. Let's go back into the top zone, the project window. And you can see that I only recorded four bars of this. So all we've got to do is drag the bottom right hand corner of this audio window. Make sure that we're on right on the dead of the fifth bar. And there's two ways to duplicate this across. Either click that middle handle and click it to the right, or drag it to the right rather. I'm just gonna undo that and show you that you can just highlight an audio piece and do Control D or Command and D. And there we have it. All nicely in time and duplicated across as well. Next thing I wanna show you is just how to vary this a little bit because it's Although it's rigid and on the bar and everything, and it's all in time, it's just a bit boring. So the keyboard did record my velocity, which is basically how hard I hit the key, because you can see under velocity here that there's a slight dip in some of these keys, and that basically means how loud the drum is going to sound. But let's just make this a little bit more interesting. Something just If you vary the velocity, you basically get a bit of swing and groove. Now 
Now you can also come in here and just take off the snap and maybe move these around just slightly off grid if you're trying to get a bit more of a human feel. So a human would never play it robotically like that and have it absolutely spot on. So you go see you see the timing is slightly off there. Good for humanizing things. Uh, there's an even better way of doing this if you just click control A or command and A and you'll select all of the notes and then just double click one of the MIDI parts, come to quantize and then you can go to swing. Now you can add a swing value in here and if you look at the screen you can see the lines moving slightly which means it's just going to add a bit of swing. So what you need to do is add say 20% or something like that. Have a mess around with this. Press Q or apply quantize and you'll see the notes jump. You can make this more obvious by doing an eighth note swing. Just makes it a little bit more obvious to apply. Just going to make that a little bit more obvious. Let's do 30% let's say. 45%, this will be very obvious now. So you can see there's quite a bit of swing on that now. Just undo all that. So I hope that was useful for you guys that like to program in or record in your own live drums and how to vary the velocity and add swing and that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do is, that was just a demo, I'm gonna delete this track here and just go back to my original pattern just to keep things simple. And I'm just going to very, very quickly show you how to add, by the way, hit edit instrument to, br to bring up your instrument, how to add reverb to the snare. So if we just go back to instrument mode for a second, click on snare, then we'll go to the amp tab, and we're going to increase the auxiliary send, and then we're going to go to mixer, and we're going to go to auxiliaries, and you see reverb is already on there as standard, and if we click it, we get the settings for it. Let's just show you what it sounds like already. So you can hear tons and tons of reverb on there. So you've got a mix knob. Maybe you don't want it quite so intense. Not room size, main time. Perhaps reduce the pre-delay a little bit. Massive reverb, 100%. Or just a tiny bit. So there you go, that's how you add reverb. And there's tons and tons of stuff you can do with the Groove Agent, as I said, but it's outside the scope of this very, very basic course. But we do have a course on Groove Agent which goes into every single part of Groove Agent and it will show you exactly how to use it. Like for example, I'll show you how to layer up different samples onto pads, so that's layer mode. So you can get really authentic sounding drums. I show you all the different pages of the mixer and exactly how to route things everywhere. So not just putting effects on, but how to route them back into Cubase. I'll go through pattern mode in a lot more detail and introduce you to the different agents. So you've got beat agent, acoustic agent, etc., etc. And I'm also showing you how to do some live remixing. So basically how we chop up, let's say vocals or some drums or something, and we get Groove Agent to map them over the keyboard and we do some live remixing. And then in the very last lesson, the ninth lesson, I put it all together and we actually make a very basic minimal house remix using all the techniques that we've learned so far in the course. So I think this course could be really useful for you if you want to learn more about Groove Agent. Anyway guys, that's the end of this lesson for the beats and the groove. In the next lesson, we're going to be starting to add some chords and then a guitar. All the best. See you later.